General Augusto Pinochet officially handed over presidential power in 1990. In 1998, he was indicted by a Spanish judge on human rights abuses, then arrested in England. He eventually returned to Chile and faced charges there, but was never convicted of any crime. He died in 2006. As Brian Burns' report mentioned, Chile's current education system is the same one that was put in place back when Augusto Pinochet was still in power. Before Pinochet, schools were free. Now they are for-profit and privatized, and many can only afford what some consider a subpar education. It's been the cause of much protest in Chile and throughout the region in the past two years. Laura Carlson has more in her view of the Americas. Over the past year or so, students in Latin America have taken to the streets in a surprising wave of demonstrations. They haven't toppled governments like the Arab Spring, but their voices are changing politics in countries throughout the hemisphere. These new student movements have different demands, depending on the national context, but there is a common thread. Young people are saying that the society handed down to them is unfair, and they don't like the future it offers. From Chile to Mexico, youth uprisings are protesting lack of access to quality education, economic systems that benefit the few, and political systems that ignore their needs. Chilean students started the wave in May 2011 with protests against student debt and the deterioration of public schools. They call for restoring quality education, especially at the university level, more government investment in schools, and lower tuitions. Next, some 600,000 Colombian students held demonstrations against a government-proposed education reform. Joined by teachers and others, they scored their first victory by forcing the Santos government to withdraw the measure. Mexico joined the youth rebellions with the unexpected birth of the I Am 132 movement. A video of 131 students showing their university credentials and proclaiming their opposition to Mexico's former ruling party went viral last May, leading to an overnight movement of young people claiming to be number 132. The movement opposed the return of the PRI, the party that governed for 71 years in the July presidential elections. Mexico's youth also called for laws to break down the media monopoly that strongly supported the PRI and exercises near total control of the airways. It's logical that the new student movements point a finger at the media. They're the children of mass media like no other generation before. They recognize that control over information and ideas undermines their democracy and the power of critical thinking. The youth movements are using social media to fight back against commercial media. They organize marches on Facebook and Twitter. They're also coming up with creative forms of protest from explaining their media demands to train commuters with cardboard boxes like televisions on their heads, to projecting three-story images on buildings during demonstrations. Unfortunately, in the last few months, governments have been responding with repression. In all three countries, students have been attacked and imprisoned. With the hatred of hypocrisy that so often characterizes the young, these students are seeing huge contradictions in societies that espouse democracy but allow enormous concentrations of economic, political, and media power. Youth have every right to make demands on their elders. They have to live in the world we eventually leave behind. In developing countries that face major challenges to maintain democratic ideals and reduce inequality that narrows their opportunities, these student movements are a breath of fresh air. For America's Now, I'm Laura Carlson. We'd love to hear from you about this commentary and all America's Now stories. Please write to us at an at cctv-america.com. Or you could send us a tweet. Our handle is at cctvamericasnow.